Welcome back to Pro Cycling Manager 2021. My name is Benji, and today I want to welcome you to the third season of Aeolo Cometa. Yes, we are back. To start off with a bang, yes, you see something different on the screen. We've got a new shot, a season three new kit. I decided to ask Tom Gauthier, arguably one of the best shirt makers in the PCM community, to make a brand new design for the team for season three and I absolutely love it. Before we take a look at what our sponsor expects from us when it comes to the races we ride, let's take a look at our team again. We start off with a 77 average Corvi right now. 78 hill, he's got 77 flat. His mountain's not too bad either at 74. Cobble, 77, so we finally have a leader when it comes to cobble races. We haven't done any cobble races so far, but I feel like we can start doing that now. Also a 73 sprint with 76 acceleration and an absolute beast, the world champion. Our sprinter is Aldani, 77 sprint right now. That is significantly higher than what he had in the middle of last season. He was still on 74 sprint, 75 acceleration back then, but now significantly faster. A very kovi like figure in Alex Aramburu, the GOAT himself. 77 hill there, 73 mountain, so slight bit lower than Kovi, but he's got a better sprint though, 75 and 75. Next to those leaders, we've got an abundance of climbers right now. 78 Mountain on Fortunato, 77 on Dina, 77 on Odon. We've got 76 on Aru, 76 on Opero as well. Cataneo at 75, Fancello at 76. Every single one of those except Cataneo has no proper time trial. Marton, Dina perhaps a bit with 69, but it's a significant difference compared to Cataneo at 77. So he's likely to be our candidate for a... TT heavy Grand Tour while the others will do their best in the others and hopefully surviving the time trials as best as they can. Honestly, next to the time trial, the secondaries are also significantly better for Cataneo. His recovery at 75 is something Dina and so forth can only dream of. Fortunato at 74 though, so that's pretty cool, but Cataneo is miles ahead of the rest on that one. From that point onwards, we basically have our talents because the majority of our team is very young. Lars Bovin, 75 hill already, so a puncher with prologue abilities. Alex Vogel, sprinter, 74-74 at the age of 23, so he's a bit older than the rest. Magnus Sheffield, the cobble guy, I guess, 73, and uh, a proper ruler business when it comes to his flat stat as well. I won't be going over every single one of the other riders, but I do want to mention Finn Fisher Black because he's an absolute beast of a talent. 74 hill and... I think most recently in real life, he was also 22nd in the last stage of Vuelta a Burgos on Laguna Zanaya. So that is a very talented rider at the age of 20 in real life, 21 in this save right now. With that excellent team, we also have to do some excellent racing and our sponsor has decided the objectives that our team has to take on this season. We've got some Italian classics in there like Sanremo or Strade Bianche, but... The most difficult ones, I think, is going to be top 5 at Tireno. That might not be too easy. And top 10 at Lombardia, I think. Now, when it comes to the ITT champs of Italy and Spain, top 3 seems very difficult with Aramburu as best Spanish TT here with 73 in our team. Italy is Cataneo 77, knowing that Gana's there, Afini's there, all those type of riders. So, I don't expect to get that top 3. Nonetheless, the rest of the objectives seem very much doable, so we should be able to get our sponsor happy this season. Calendar-wise, we've got the following on the menu. We start off in Australia, down under for the uh, Santos to down under. We have, after that, Catalan's Great Ocean Road Race. We go towards New Zealand for the NCs in February together with Andalusia and the Cobble Classics. March starts off with Italian Classics, La Weglia and Strade, then Tireno and Sanremo, then some Spanish Classics while we do the likes of Duarte de Vlaanderen and Ronde van Vlaanderen, hopefully, and Roubaix, hopefully, with Itzulia in between. We've got the Hill Classics, Alps, Romandy, Giro. After that, we prep for the Tour de France using the Tour de Suisse and the NCs. And after the Tour de France, we've got San Sebastian and basically Burgos and Vuelta. And then the final episode of the season is basically the last few races, including the likes of a Lombardia once again. Pretty stacked calendar, but I do enjoy it that way. I feel like this will be the longest season so far, episodes-wise. Yeah, we're going to be riding three Grand Tours, which is going to be fun. So, before we decide who to send where, it's best to take a look what those Grand Tours will hold. The Giro is actually quite time trial heavy. About 45 kilometers of individual time trial, with 19 kilometers of flatness. I think this is the Giro of 
20, ooh, 11 or 2010. Plenty of good climbing stage. We start off in week one already with this stage, Monte Vergine di Mercoliano. And then we've got another mountain stage a few days later, which is to the Etna. And a bit later, we have Grosglockner. And after that, Monte Zoncolan with the Monte Crostes before that. I swear that this stage in real life had the Crostes cut out or something. I remember something vague like that. After that, we've got Gardecchia, basically uh, the Val di Fassa finish, which is quite a steep one. Yes, 17.3% in the end. That is ruthless. Nivegal Mountain Time Trial, and a bit of a mountain stage with a flatter ending on day 17. And after that, a bit of a pause in the middle. And then we have Macuniana on day 19, and day 20 is basically Colle del Finestre towards Sistriere. So... 241 kilometers with a completely flat run-in, so that should be fun. And we finish off with a time trial, the one I've mentioned before, 33 kilometers. So that's what the Giro looks like. I think you basically need to be a good climber with good time trial for this one and have a team surrounding you that can also time trial. But I vaguely remember looking at the Tour de France as well and also seeing a team time trial. So not sure how our team is going to manage both. Exactly, a 39 kilometer team time trial on day four. That is mad. We've got day one a Monaco ITT. I think this is a custom one. I don't think this is a real Tour de France, which makes it a bit more mysterious. So, kind of fun as well. We've got Andorra already in the first week on day seven, finishing on Arcalis. We've got Saint Giron with Bordeaux Valira, but this is not exactly the mountain stage where you'll win the tour nor lose it, to be honest. Second week's not that crazy, and then we start off the third week with Verbier as the first finish. Day 16, two major mountains, I think. The Saint Bernard climbs, yes, Grand Saint Bernard and Petit Saint Bernard. Mountain stages once again coming up after that with Le Grand Bournon, basically with Col du Rome and Col de la Colombière. So a bit like the stage Pogacar won in the 2021 Tour de France, but very much mountainous at the start, Comet de Rosalon and Col de Saisie. Then we've got a time trial, a 40 kilometer flat time trial. So quite insane considering we already had the time trial in Monaco at the start. So also a TT heavy Grand Tour. And the final mountain stage on day 20, Mont Ventoux. Yes, indeed. That's awesome. We finish off on the Champs-Élysées as always. That's what the Tour de France looks like. Vuelta then, Sevilla. So that is 2011, I think, the parkour that we are doing. And as you can see, three mountain stages. That is mad. We start off with a team time trial, so 16 kilometers purely flat, and we have 46 kilometers individual flat time trial in week three. So looking at all three Grand Tours, I think this is the least TT heavy one, but it's still a difficult one for the uh, time trial skills. We've got plenty of these punchy hill stages all throughout the Grand Tour, which is utterly insane. This is considered a hill stage, but I'd start considering this one a mountain stage already. Andorra once again, so the tour goes to Andorra, and so does the Vuelta. A first mountain stage, Lagos de Corvadonga, a hockey stick parkour, as the Lantern Rouge starts to call these ones. Day after, mountain stage once again, Cotobeo. I think there's a bit of a pause then, yes, the time trial, two flat stages, and day 20 is Bula del Mundo, also a mountain stage. So, honestly, not that mountainous. I dare to, like have a try with a Covey or something for this Grand Tour. Knowing that Covey has 74 mountain but 78 hill, by then he might have like 79 or 80. I've actually chosen to put the training axis of Covey not on Northern Classics like it was because he now has 77 gobble, but I put it on Stage Racer because he's got the time trial already. 70 and 69, I think, time trial prologue. He's got 74 mountain, 78 hills, so if I can up that a tiny bit to like 75 mountain with 71 or 72 time trial, that would be so bloody perfect for this Grand Tour, and we can try and win the Vuelta with someone like Colby. That would be fun. With all that in mind, knowing what the Grand Tours look like, I'll go ahead and start planning out the season for every single one of our riders. I'll basically see when it's done, because... This is boring, three-hour work, basically, so uh, I better get started. Actually, I don't think this is a good idea, because we've got so many riders now that we have to plan a lot of World Tour races that we are not sure we will go to yet. For example, Santa Stora and Under is still in the running to be invited to it, so we don't know it yet, so we can't plan it yet. And this is for the entire season, so it's 
basically impossible to plan it already. So I think I'll have to plan it every single month throughout the career mode and do it that way because right now it's just impossible to see what races a rider is going to ride or not. But nonetheless, I did already do the objectives for every single one of our riders based on the calendar we have. I did add some races next to the ones we're going to be showing on video because I do want to make sure my riders are not really complaining all year about, oh, I don't have enough races and then have bad form when I need them in the race. So the plan is simple. I'll wait a few days in game and have our January planned in. And once that is done, I'll show it to you. And I'll do that every single month. So, you know, the uh, rosters that are going to which races and which riders are going to which ground tours and such. Oh, wow. They're not even accepting wildcards at the Santa Fernanda this year. So I guess it's impossible for us to start our season there. Oh, well, now we've got some wildcard news. This is going to get interesting. We've got Baron Nice. I didn't ask, so... It's normal that we're not invited. LBL, we are accepted, so that is great. Dauphiné, I did not ask. To the Falls, we asked then. We have gotten that. Yes, indeed. We will be uh, racing the Tour this year. La Flèche didn't ask. And Roubaix, I did ask. And Ooh, we are not invited for Roubaix. That's a bit of a bummer. When it comes to Strade, I did receive my wildcard as expected, knowing we also got one the last two years. Fortunately, we are also invited to Sanremo and Giro, as expected, but also to Tireno. I just accidentally just deleted the email, so you're gonna have to believe my word. Turns out we've got growth in our team. We've got Fortunato now with 79 Mountain, and Dina grew as well to 78 Mountain. My god, why is there growing left and right here? Aritza Ramburu, 75 Mountain, and the rest of his stats are abysmal, but it's kind of funny. How is this guy 19 with 75 Mountain? We've got Morgrove, we've got Sheffield at the age of 20 at 77 Cobble, and Vogel at 77 Sprint, 75 Acceleration. We've had 27 days simulated right now, and these guys are becoming monsters. All of that just before our first race of the season, Race Tolke. Without Santos Sudananda, this is where we started. And Oldani is our sprinter here, but we've also got Vogel. Vogel was supposed to be the lead out, but at this point, it will all depend on daily form, I think. Here we go, we are in the race. For the first time, we can view our beautiful new kits. And as you can see, the NCs have been reworked as well by Tom Gauthier, so shout out once again. Nonetheless, when it comes to the race, pretty inconclusive daily form. Zero day on Aldani, 79 sprint, same thing for Vogel. But on paper, the secondaries on Aldani are just miles ahead, so he's going to be our sprinter today. Four kilometers to go, Sheffield pulling at the front. Yoda in his wheel. We've got a bit of a sprint already happening with Emil's Lippens on the right. We're going to start a sprint with Yoda right now. Sheffield can try and get out of the way. Vogel in second wheel there. This is not ideal at all, but we might come around. We might come around. Last kilometer, Oldani comes around. Vogel, Oldani, Bennett. Caleb Ewan versus Oldani. It's going to be on the line. Ooh, I think Ewan takes it. Ah, we're going to celebrate anyway because we're happy with our second spot and not because I accidentally clicked the celebration button. The best sprinter in the world wins, not really unexpected. We've got Oldani in the second spot, so I'm pretty happy about the result here. Definitely considering the competition we are beating. I wonder what Gaviria's sprint stat is. 79, okay. Fogel, good result as well, to be honest, even though he was the lead out. Some more wildcard news then. We've got an acceptation for Catalonia, so that's great. And I'm still gold race also, so we're almost getting every race we ask, which is great. To prevent spending too much on travel expenses, I've sent the exact same team to the Cat 11's Great Ocean Road Race, considering it's also in Australia. So, Oldani or Vogel, the daily form will decide. We're going to go for exactly the same approach as the race Torque, but we've got some attacks here in the final 10 kilometers. So, let's try and counter everything that happens with our train here. Looks like Vogel has some issues. Oh, we're spending energy getting to the wheel. Let's hope we can recover that before the actual sprint starts. Gonna start sprinting with Yoda, a bit too late to be honest, and hopefully Sheffield is not in the way. Oh, I'm launching way too late with everybody, but Oldani tries to come around versus Nizolo and Ewan. It's gonna be Nizolo most likely, or does Ewan come around? It is Nizolo. We get third on this one just after Ewan, ahead of Gaviria. So, between the best sprinters in the world once again. The ups and downs in the last section of this race surely made my sprint train not as perfect as it should be, but... A third spot on this race behind Caleb Yuna and Nizolo is certainly a good one for us. So I'm happy about what we've done here. Our next race is the Saudi Tour. We've got a five-day stage race. I think it's the same parkour as last year. Hilly sprint on day one. We've got a flat sprint on day two. Flat sprint once again. 
Then a hilly parkour and a flat sprint. I think we still got over this climb with Oldani and were able to sprint at the end last season. So let's try and repeat that. And day five is a flat sprint. So on paper, this fits Stefan Oldani. Hopefully, we can do better than last year because I vaguely remember losing a few sprints in this race, if not all of them. So let's try and do better this time around. We've got Vogel as support and a decent team of semi-decent climbers and just supportive artists here. Important to note though, we've got a hell of a competition here. Basically the world championship for sprinters. Caleb Ewan needs a lot. Mar Bennett, that is crazy. Stewart has 81 sprint. My god. Anyway, let's give it a go. The final of the stage is actually quite tricky. Two small hills. We're now on the first of the two. The latter one falls in the last two-ish kilometers. Let's switch towards Peak as we speak into this ascent at 99. We can recover with the rest of the riders in that descent, hopefully. And 99 again towards Yoda for the sprint as we speak. That's too early, I think. I think I just went way too early. It's uphill, that's why. Fogel goes. Oldani on the wheel. Oh, this is going to be a tough one to win. This is going to be a really tough one to win. We've got a gap, though. Fogel, Oldani now. Oldani versus Viviani on paper. We've got the advantage of a hill rider. And we are going to win. Yes, indeed, we're going to win the first stage of the Saudi Tour ahead of Caleb Yoon once again. Buhani in second. Third. I can't count. We've done it. Our first victory in the new shirt in this new season. And we've done it against the best of the world. As a consequence, we take the lead. And it looks like we've got some breakaway riders in the top five there as well with Balke and Zafa Shwanayo. I did that first try. Wow, that actually surprised me. Looks like we've also got a wild card for Trude Romandy. And yes, for Itzulia as well. Nice. Same story goes for this race, really, but the final is less hilly, so it should be a more straightforward sprint. Four kilometers to go. Peak at the front. Let's add the tempo a bit into this final stretch. Let's hope our sprint comes through nicely. And it's time for Yoda to go right now at 2.5k to go. I think that might be early, but it shouldn't be. Vogel can try and go right now. Oldani in the wheel with a plus five on the day, so that should be perfect. Oldani versus Barbero versus Ewan on the right. Oldani, can he come around? It seems like we can. Needs all those tries to counter us. Ooh, it's gonna be us. Yes, indeed. A second victory in a row for Oldani once again. Awesome ride by the Italian. I love how I tried to celebrate like twice in a row, these both stages, and he just rolls over the line without doing it. <laughs> anyway, I'm happy with the victory already. Stage three is a flat sprint, and we've got two wins already, so let's try and make it a hat trick. Four kilometers to go. We've actually got a different sprint train this time around. Vogel in the wheel of Oldani because Oldani has a plus five on day and better stats. So I guess I'll give it a try. Perhaps it's not that great for our bonus seconds and such, but I wanted to try it. Yoda launches way too late, I think. Oldani can launch as well with this corner and I won't wait too long with your boy Vogel right now. There we go. Vogel and Oldani. It might be Oldani actually taking it. Viviani on the right, but... Oldani holds on, Oldani holds on, and Oldani will be taking it right here. It might be a 1 2 for our team. Viviani takes second spot ahead of Vogel, but great result once again. A hat trick for Oldani, even though he was the lead out today. I just launched way too late. Oldani's victory extends his lead 18 seconds on Taliani right now, who was in the breakaway and took some bonus seconds. That's why he's second. Nonetheless, let's take a look at the next stage, which is the hilly one. We've got Waninama Park to Al Muzahimiya. King Saud University, 140 kilometers and those two hills that we also crossed in the previous stage, but this stage is seen as a hill classification apparently. We'll get over it and we'll try and get Oldani a fourth victory. 3.5k to go, Peak is doing Yoda's work because he's not looking too good after those hills, so let's up him to 99, let's start sprinting Vogel in the wheel, let's see if we can get around and hopefully launch Oldani on the perfect moment right now it isn't looking amazing but Bennett is not looking good either let's see if somebody can come around in the end needs Zolo tries no 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 oh on the line and I clicked celebrate by accident snap this is the first time I celebrate in this race and it's the one time I lose <laughs> Honestly, despicable behavior by Nizolo. After last year, we gave him the European Championships, but no, he does not value that friendship enough to deliver a victory for Aldani here. Time to finish off the Saudi Tour then with once again a flat stage, so another opportunity for Aldani to get his fourth victory here. The speed in the peloton today is ruthless, and it is causing the riders in the peloton to simply sit up because they're done for. So... 
I think I have to actually start working 26 kilometers, 1 minute 12, and they keep on flying because they've got 16 riders up there and every domestique in the peloton is done for. I even used Vogelar lead out for this, but there is no way I can close that down. Perhaps with a sneaky attack by old Donnie right here to get a witch to it. Let's see if that works out. Let's follow his move. How did that not follow his move? That makes no sense. 45 seconds. This could work. If they keep going, Sagan is closing it for us. Come on, Sagan. Close it for me. Let's try and help out. Go for an attack again, old Dani. We've got some people trying to close us down, but we might be able to close it towards the front if that is possible. Then we might have an option of still winning today's stage. Oh my god. This has been a shocker. Fortunately, we were able to catch a few under the intermediate sprint, but still four people ahead. 25 seconds. I've got a bit of energy on old Dani left. The rest of the team is completely gone. So this is going to be a bit of an improv stage, but hopefully... We can catch the front and still compete for victory. 11 seconds, 7 kilometers. We are closing them down and it is Noppa doing so. Milano and Ackermann right here. I'm currently in the wheel of Ackermann, but I think I want a different wheel. 2 kilometers to go. I'm just following this Hajduk guy. Let's try and move up on the left here. Oh, it's going to be tough. Let's try and sprint right now. There we go. From the wheel of Milan versus Buhani. We've got a bit of a gap right now. 500 meters to go. Can we still win it? Oh my god. Absolute domination in this race by Stefano Aldani. He takes his full victory out of five and, in all honesty, it was the hardest stage of this race by far. In the end, Aldani is also the victor of the Saudi Tour 30 seconds ahead of Nizzolo. What a grandiose start of the season for our Italian. And for the team, to be honest, it was mainly a sprinting episode today, but also the preparation of the season and it all worked out pretty well. In the next episode, we're going to be starting off with an overview of what happened in the world around us. Let's take a look, for example, at the top 10 of each stat, because we were surprised with Stewart having 81 sprint today. Would love to see if any other people out there have similar surprising stats. After that, some racing, most likely New Zealand National Championships, certainly Omlop, Andalusia, and depending on how I feel, I might do Oman or UAE tour in the video as well. So... Guess we'll all see that next time. If you like today's video, the start of the season, then tap that like button. If you didn't, tell me what's wrong. I'll try and make it better for you next time. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.